We try to bring you high quality educational and informational content every single day. Why do you think the price is having such an anemic time? The new story of the hour. Is this the beginning of a massive financial unraveling? We gotta add a little addendum to the show now today. So we start here on the daily. Now we've been looking at the RSI on the Bitcoin's daily chart for the last several days. Well, it's been increasing over the last 50 years since the war. The government. Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here and welcome back to Coffee and Crypto. Guys, we've got a great show lined up for you today. We are going to be talking about how $940 million worth of Bitcoin just moved off of Coinbase Pro, the institutional side of Coinbase's trading platform. And the reason that that's so significant is what that looks like is a major whale just moved thousands and thousands of Bitcoin off of exchange so that they would be able to accumulate. As you guys know, we saw Bitcoin originally drop down to about 18500 back in June, bounced up to 20600 within a matter of 24 hours. And ever since then, we've more or less been trading sideways in that time. Bitcoin has pretty much moved exactly zero in the grand scheme of things over the last three to four months. But one of the things that we have seen continue is the development of the fundamental space around cryptocurrency. So we've seen a lot of whales accumulating Bitcoin. We've seen a lot of companies continuing to grow and implement new solutions that are going to be used at length in the coming bull market. On this channel, we've grown and shown you guys how we believe that the next uh, 12 to 18 months or so, we're going to see a major parabolic uh, movement happen on Bitcoin, an inflection point coming in on Bitcoin, moving up towards the next halving cycle, and then we will go into that big movement having to do with the Federal Reserve tapering rates, hopefully plateauing rates, and then tapering rates here in a year or so, having to do with the U.S. real estate markets, having to do with conflict in Europe, having to do with all kinds of different things. We believe that about 12 months from now, we're going to see a big movement. But to get there, Bitcoin first has to actually go through what may look like a big drop to start with. So we're going to talk about how $940 million worth of Bitcoin just moved, what that means. We're also going to talk about how its volatility has actually dropped to the lowest point that it has been in a very long time, even lower than the stock market. Bitcoin's volatility right now is lower than it has been in two years. Again, like I said, people have been talking at length about how, oh man, Bitcoin's so volatile, except now it's actually less volatile than the stock market. We're going to discuss that, and we're also going to be reading uh, a lot of chat. We're going to read all your super chats and all of the chat and answer some questions, and we're going to be doing a lot of altcoin technical analysis today. I asked on Twitter, a lot of you guys were interested in seeing some content around Matic and Link. So we're going to be looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Matic, and Link today, and if we have time, we will throw in a sixth cryptocurrency to do some TA on that we can ask you guys about. We're going to go ahead and read some super chats, but before we do, I do want to introduce the guest of today's show, which is none other than my wife, Sarah. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm doing well, sweetie. How are you? I am doing phenomenally. We both have colds, in case you guys couldn't hear in my voice over the last couple of days. Luckily, and this is a godsend, this is an absolute blessing, it hasn't really affected my voice all that much, and that's really what I need to bring you today's show, is my voice, and we've both been sick since the weekend, so I've got a big headache, I'm stuffed up, but my throat is actually feeling all right. So that's just a blessing, man. We we have the ability to actually do the show. Sarah, I think you're starting to feel better now, right? Yes, I am for the most part. Yeah. So we're looking forward to bringing you guys the show today. Sarah's going to be keeping track of all of the comments. By the way, any questions that you guys have for uh, Crypto Sarah or whatever your screen name is going to end up being, uh, let us know in chat. She's going to be the co-host of the show here for some time. We are excited to have her here. I am excited to have her here. Anyway, we've got 400 people watching, 107 likes. We're going to jump into some content here pretty soon, but I want to read some green names. Give a shout out to all of you guys. Sean Burns Jr. was first. 
So shout out to Sean Burns Jr. Maybe we should start by reading whoever was first. He was the first today. So shout out to Sean Burns. Good to see your name. Haven't seen your name in a little while here. Uh, Crypto Smitty, first green name in chat today. Very much appreciating Crypto Smitty. Uh, for his continued membership. Brad Geidel is in chat. The Coin Father is in chat. Uh, Grand Roofing Incorporated, the Coin Father again. We got a mellow fellow, Mitch Shaw. Brad Geidel again, a mellow fellow again. Grand Roofing Incorporated, Jeremy Shorter. We got uh, Mike Lowry in chat. Crypto Ben Franklin in chat. We got Justin Eubanks in chat. Flair Staking in chat. Mitch Shaw again. Make sure I'm not missing anyone here. We got Justin Eubanks. Crypto Roofing Incorporated. Man, we got a bunch of people in chat. Already 500 people watching. Really appreciate everybody tuning in today. Guys, give me one second just to get something set up here. There's one thing that I forgot to make sure was going to be good for today. Just want to check one thing, and then we're going to jump into some cryptocurrency news. Okay, sounds good. We are good to go. First thing we're going to do here, guys, is we are going to go ahead and jump on over to CoinMarketCap. Got 500 people watching. Thank you so very much. Make sure to hit that like button if you haven't already. Over on CoinMarketCap, you can see Bitcoin's currently trading at $19,220. And stay tuned because after the market pulse, got an exciting reminder for you guys. It is down 2% in the last 24 hours, up 0.63% in the last seven days. Down 15.9% in the last 90 days and down 60% year to date. But it's still... Bitcoin is still worth $367 billion. Kevin O'Leary, who we're going to talk about relatively soon, calls cryptocurrency the 12th aspect, the 12th sector of the S&P, and uh, for good reason. We're looking at uh, cryptocurrency in the middle of a major winter, and it's still worth $900 billion, with a B, dollars. That is remarkable. Bitcoin is down from all-time high, yet 72 and a half percent and still all of cryptocurrency worth 922 billion dollars so one of the things i like to do to get started with our major technical analysis days because we're going to really dive deep into some charts got matic over here we got link we got cardano uh this is set up to link but it actually needs to be a theory we're going to look at eth here in a little bit as well the thing i really would like to start with when we're going to do a really in-depth technical analysis day is perspective a lot of people don't realize that the all-time high at uh, for market capitalization industry-wide was $773 billion set on January 6th, 2018, back during that bear market, uh, back during the 2016-17 bull market and then leading through January. This was pretty much the date that we saw Ethereum hit all-time high. Ethereum hit all-time high about a month after Bitcoin had hit all-time high. If I remember correctly, I think it was January 13th. It was about January 13th or so that ETH hit all-time high. It was almost a month after Bitcoin because it was lagging behind. And in doing so, crypto hit an all-time high of $773 billion before pulling back during that crypto winter down to $100 billion. Right now, we are 75% retraced from all-time high. I'd say probably 70 to 80% of the way through the bear market time-wise. And so now we are sitting at almost a trillion dollars. So even though we have seen a retrace of 73%, at, at maximum almost 80% on Bitcoin, many of the top movers in crypto like Cardano down 88% from all-time high. Despite all of that, at the bottom, we are still sitting at an industry that is over five times larger market capitalization-wise than it was at the same point in 2018. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. In 2018, we saw a 50% drop towards the end here. It looks like coin market, cap, coin market cap giving me a little bit of trouble here. But you can see right here, even if it's a little bit flat, you can see market cap at roughly the same point in the cycle that we're at now. We were sitting at $200 billion, and we ended up dropping down to $100 billion. I think there's a good likelihood that we could see another drop. But even in doing so, we are five times higher. Compare $940 billion to $185 billion, we're five times higher than we were there. And if you look at the all-time high market capitalization from 773 all the way up to nearly $3 trillion, you're also looking at nearly five times larger market. So the market is four to five times larger in just four to five years. That's incredible. And I want you guys to really take note of that because 400 to 500% growth, 100% growth in the industry year over year, is something that we don't want to ignore. And it's context that I want you to have before we go into a lot of these uh, charts and um, uh, coins that we're going to be looking at today because a lot of them are down substantially from all-time high. Half a decade ago when I got into crypto, half of them didn't even exist, and the other half were much lower than they are right now. Very important that we keep our perspective. We're about to jump into some news, but I do just want to give you a couple of updates. We are going to be uh, releasing, I'm going to be releasing a video here in November interviewing none other 
And Kevin O'Leary, I told you guys this a couple days ago, just wanted to give you a reminder, there is going to be an interview done with Mr. Wonderful himself here for the channel. As you guys know, I talked with him in person. I was able to sit down with him in Miami earlier this year, and I also was able to interview him over on Market Talks, over on Cointelegraph, and uh, now he's going to be coming on the channel. So we're going to have our own exclusive Kevin O'Leary interview here on Coffee and Crypto here on Crypto Jeb. He's not going to be on the stream. It's going to be a recorded interview. We're going to be ending Coffee and Crypto early that day because he was only available at 11, which is, you know, I need some time to set up the production to make sure everything's good. So we'll probably be going for a 30-minute stream that day, or we might start half an hour earlier. We'll see what happens there. But look forward to that. About a month from now, you will be having an interview from none other than Mr. Wonderful himself. A lot of you guys are still asking questions about What's going on with Club DeFi? Why is Jeb here? Where's the team? A lot more information coming out on that in the coming days and weeks. A lot of things are getting sorted out right now, so stay tuned. There will be more information regarding those questions at some point in the not-too-distant future. But before we jump into the news, just want to check the chat. We already have 700 people watching, so thank you very much for tuning in. If you have just tuned in, we got 234 likes. Let's see if we can't get up to 300 likes relatively quickly. Do we have any super chats so far, sweetheart? Do we have any uh, any really interesting comments that you have seen? Anything to that effect? I haven't seen any super chats, but I mean, if you super chatted and I didn't see you, please comment again and I can... Yeah, I don't think we have seen any just yet, but thank you very much for all of the green names. We got um, you know, Mike Lowry in chat. Let me just see if there's anyone. Mitch Shaw, I think I gave him a shout-out. Let's see if there's any other green names here. Crypto JMP, don't think I've given him a shout-out yet. Appreciate all of you guys for your continued support. So excited. Christopher McFarland's in chat. Good to see you, Christopher. Haven't seen your name in a little bit. Dr. Fuzzy Eyeball's in chat. Thank you so very much, guys. Let's see. A lot of spam today. Thank you to our moderators for keeping that under control. Guys, come on. This is a channel where we are trying to do some TA and glorify God, and we just we just don't need all of that. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Gia S. also in chat. All right. Well, appreciate you guys tuning in. Like I said, we got a great show lined up. We're going to start over here with an article right here. Uh, having to do with J.P. Morgan. J.P. Morgan appoints former Celsius executive as crypto regulatory policy head, says report. If you're not familiar with Celsius, it was a part of the big three arrows capital and a lot of the collapse in the financial system in cryptocurrency relatively recently. Celsius has just been dragged through the ringer and a lot of their executives obviously are now moving on considering everything that occurred. If you guys don't know, Do Kwon over at Terra Luna was the uh, founder, and he was the head of Terra Luna. And unfortunately for everybody who was invested in Terra Luna, Luna went from, I think it was around $40 and change, down to about one cent in the span of just a little while. We lost 40 some billion dollars in market capitalization. US, uh, UST, uh, U, uh, the uh, Terra, the Terra-backed stablecoin, pretty much collapsed, and we lost, uh, including the stablecoin, almost $60 billion in market cap like that. It's not like the market capitalization moved somewhere else. It just vanished. It's gone. And uh, with that, a lot of different lending platforms that had a lot of money invested in Terra all of a sudden lost 10, 15, 20% of their assets, whatever the number is, and they, uh, they lost their asset is what happened. And they weren't able to continue to pay back the people that were putting money on the platform to generate this yield and generate that 15, 20% a year APY that they were looking forward to. So there was a major collapse in the industry. People uh, likened it to Lehman Brothers and a lot of those collapses that we saw in 08. Luckily, we're on the other end of that now. A lot of that has calmed down. Many of the companies that were going to go bankrupt have now gone bankrupt, and we've seen a great purge in the crypto industry. But now those executives are moving around, and one of them just went to J.P. Morgan. Aaron Levine spent eight months early this year as head of policy and regulatory affairs for crypto lender Celsius. J.P. Morgan has appointed Aaron Levine as the head of crypto regulatory policy, a newly created role, according to Bloomberg Report on Wednesday. They just made a new role for this guy. The U.S. investment banking giant wishes to expand its digital asset regulatory scope given the volatile conditions in the market in recent months with a downturn in cryptocurrencies value and several firms becoming insolvent. We saw that happening with 3AC 
and a few others. Levine himself used to work for one of these, spending eight months as head of policy and regulatory affairs for crypto lender Celsius, which filed for bankruptcy protection in July. Levine held this role from February to September this year, according to his LinkedIn page. J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon is well known for his disdain for cryptocurrency, most recently referring to crypto tokens as decentralized Ponzi's. He did, however, praise blockchain technology, noting its certain real aspects using J.P. Morgan's Onyx platform for wholesale payments as an example. This is very interesting to me for a multitude of reasons. First and foremost, J.P. Morgan's CEO, Jamie Dimon, hates cryptocurrency. I mean, he called most crypto tokens a decentralized Ponzi scheme. We're talking about a guy that does not like Bitcoin, and he has disliked Bitcoin for a long time. And if you want my opinion, which if you're watching this, I assume that's why you're here. The reason that he hates Bitcoin, I would think, and I don't know this, never spoken to the guy, but is probably because Bitcoin threatens the 10- to 20-year outlook for what his banking giant can do in its industry. Cryptocurrency is the next generation of finance and is going to force a lot of major changes in the banking sector. And I think Jamie Dimon, Jamie Dimon realizes that it is a uh, force to contend with and one that he is going to be hard-pressed to change and stop. So that'd be one thing that I want to point out here is Jamie Dimon being against this. And also the other thing is it just goes to show you how little control CEOs really have over their companies at large. I mean, most most of the times they're not the ones hiring these different little heads and everything. This is not a C-suite executive that we're talking about here that reports straight to Jamie Dimon. The person that got hired here is probably four or five layers down the, tr down the corporate chain from Mr. Dimon himself. So there's a lot going on in his own company that if he were the, the company that he's the CEO of anyway, that he could go in and say, ah, you know, cut this, get rid of this. We need to put that money somewhere else. But he's only one guy. He's only got so much time. So there is active cryptocurrency investment of, re, of capital going on in JP Morgan Chase while their CEO, Jamie Dimon, doesn't like it. That's kind of the way that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency has been getting into the mainstream lately is a lot of these people that are in a lot of power don't like it, but for some reason, they're just not able to stop it because the masses love it. And this is a good example, and that's actually really the thing I want to talk about in this article is the fact that there's cryptocurrency adoption going on in a company, in a bank, in a central institution, a central banking institution, not central banking, but a major inst banking institution like JP Morgan, and the CEO doesn't even like it. That just goes to show you how you cannot stop Bitcoin, you cannot stop cryptocurrency, and I'm really excited for what that is going to look like moving into the future. Now, I also want to show you this article over on CNBC. Bitcoin fails to rally with stocks as $940 million of crypto is pulled from exchange favored by institutions. So essentially what we saw he happen here, 48,000 Bitcoins moved off of, Bit of Coinbase Pro yesterday, which is an exchange that is favored amongst large institutions. So for example, if JP Morgan wanted to get into crypto, they'd probably be using Coinbase Pro. Someone, we don't know who, just moved 48,000 Bitcoin worth almost a billion dollars. We're talking about like... 0.3% of all Bitcoin in existence just moved off of Coinbase. And that begs the question, why? Well, as you guys know, there is this uh, there is this idea in cryptocurrency that essentially you have people pulling cryptocurrency off of exchanges because they want to huddle it and they want to keep it in their own reserve so that they're able to hold on to it and they don't have to worry about it, uh, you know, accruing fees or it being at risk of being hacked on a central exchange, but they pull it off into some kind of either uh, first party um, um, situation where they can hold it in a cold wallet, like on a ledger, for example. By the way, if you don't have a ledger, they're great products. Check them out. Link in the description box down below. Or they end up pulling them off, and and for these major corporations, these major institutions, these whales that have 48,000 Bitcoin just moving around like it's nothing, they're probably moving it into some kind of third party custodian. The point is they would likely, in this case, be moving it into long-term storage, and that is a trend that we've seen over the last several months of people moving cryptocurrency off of exchange into long-term storage, and those are the whales. Those are the people that really understand the industry and really understand, hey, look, I got a billion dollars in crypto, and I have a very strong feeling based on X, Y, and Z data and reasoning and rationale that this Bitcoin that is worth a billion dollars now is going to be worth $10 billion in 10 years. So I'm going to move it off of exchange and hold on to it. So when we see these outflows going on, it's a big deal. You can even see Bitcoin exchange net flows. There's been inflows onto exchange, for example, in July of 2021 when Bitcoin was sitting pretty high. But relatively recently, we've seen major outflows. Like, for example, June 17th, we saw negative 55,000 Bitcoin I almost said negative $55,000. Negative 55000 Bitcoin moving off of exchanges 
where people would take them off of exchange and hold on to them so that they'd be able to do that. So that's actually really encouraging that we have some of these major, major whales pulling cryptocurrency off of exchange so that they are able to hold on to it for the long term. Billion dollars worth of crypto just moved, and it does seem that that billion dollars worth of crypto just got moved into long term storage. Really excited about that. Going to go ahead and check in with the chat here for just a second before we jump into our next part of the stream. Got 916 people watching. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure to smash that like button. Sarah, how are you doing? It looks like you wanted to say something. I'm doing good, sweetie. I just know that we have a super chat. All righty, let's hear it. You want me to say it? Yeah, can you read it? Oh, okay. We have a super chat from iChart Daily. You do? Well, good to hear, Sarah. It sounds like she's... Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> How do you feel about Bitcoin dominance rising? That's Thank a, you. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that super chat. That's a great question. Let's go ahead and jump on over to Coin Market Cap. We can look at Bitcoin dominance here for a moment. Appreciate all of you guys tuning in. Got a great show for you, and we are excited. Looks like Coin Market Cap's giving me a little bit of trouble here. Let's go on over to Coin to. Uh, market dominance. Here we go. It was pulling it right here. So market dominance has been a very important metric over the course of my uh, tenure here in cryptocurrency, and I've looked at it for many, many years. The thing you want to keep in mind with market dominance is that whenever Bitcoin market dominance is high, oftentimes that indicates that there is a lack of confidence in the altcoins. So for example, here in 2018 and 19, Bitcoin market dominance was sitting very high. In fact, towards the end of 19, uh, we saw Bitcoin dominance sitting at 70%. This is, for example, the beginning of September. If we look at where that was back over here, that's roughly in this territory where Bitcoin was on a tear, but the rest of the altcoins did not have a lot of confidence behind them. Right here is roughly right here on this chart, for example, just so you can see the overlap. We saw very low altcoin uh, dominance, and we saw very high Bitcoin dominance November uh, November 3rd, I'm sorry, September 3rd of 2019. I'll just go ahead and give you a horizontal, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, a vertical line to give you an idea of where that would have been. We would have been looking at November uh, the third right here. So Bitcoin had been rallying exorbitantly. The altcoins weren't really doing a whole lot because they were still developing. And this is kind of where we are right now with a lot of the space. You know, we saw that Bitcoin was doing very well because Bitcoin had already been around for 10 years at this point. But a lot of these altcoins, including Ethereum and Cardano and all these other altcoins, they really didn't they really hadn't been around for very long. So they were still developing a lot of their core architecture. And that's one of the things that I'm really excited about right now is that similarly to where we were towards the end of 19, we saw a lot of altcoins developing core architecture that would come to uh, profit and come to realization later on. For example, if we come back towards this uh, towards this point in time, this is kind of what I'm talking about with a lot of these altcoins that we're going to discuss today. Let's just look at November of 2019 where Ethereum was, for example. It was the number two cryptocurrency even back then. If we look back to this time in uh, November the 3rd, of 2019, big, uh, Ethereum was trading at $1,800. Ethereum 2.0 was long, was a long way away. You know, the EIP 1559 hadn't come yet. That was later on. There was a ton of things going on with Ethereum that still needed to be developed. Because of that fundamental development going on, however, within two years, Ethereum rallied 2,600% which is unheard of in any other industry to rally that far that quickly. As far as Bitcoin dominance rising, I would not be surprised to see Bitcoin dominance start to pick up in a major way, moving back into the uh, this uh, accumulation phase, if you will, as we move towards the next halving. The next 18 months or so, we should see Bitcoin in general. Now, I don't mean on the aggregate, but in general, moving to the upside. I do believe that there's a strong likelihood of a 50% drop down to nine to $10,000 first. But after that, we should see a general rise on Bitcoin and the altcoin space is far more mature at this point, so we might not see just a massive runaway on Bitcoin dominance, but we probably will see Bitcoin dominance ga uh, gain a little bit, maybe up towards that 45 to 50% region. 50% would probably be pushing it at this point because the altcoins are so well-developed, but I could see it pushing up towards that region. Like I said, though, the altcoins are very well-developed, and they do have a lot of adoption, especially Ethereum and uh, Cardano and many of the others like that. So we'll have to see on that. But ultimately, I think when you see Bitcoin dominance starting to move to the upside, that's an early warning sign that 12 months out, you're going to see a bull market going on. Because when Bitcoin's rallying and pulling everybody back into the space, it takes time. But those new people in the space start looking at the altcoins and they realize there's more here than just Bitcoin. Then you have the whole thing pop off and you have a bull market start. That's why I think it's going to look like relatively soon. But let's go ahead and do some technical analysis on Bitcoin. We've been, uh, I've been running my mouth here for a little bit and we will uh, continue to host the show here. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Already have, let's just see here. Got a thousand people watching, 423 likes. Wow, guys, 
so flattered that you would choose to spend your time with me today. Thank you so very much for tuning in and Thank you guys for all of the love and affection in the chat. Let's go ahead and move on to Bitcoin here. We'll look at Bitcoin and Ethereum, and then we'll take a pause, and then we'll move on to some altcoins, and that'll be our show. Bitcoin, as you know, is in this descending triangle pattern. I've talked about this pretty much every show since I've been back. This descending triangle pattern is so incredibly important because it looks strikingly similar to what we saw going on in 2018. Towards the end of 2018, we saw a major drop on Bitcoin where it dropped from $6,000 all the way down to $3,000. And that drop had a huge, huge implication for Bitcoin. Bitcoin would lose half its market capitalization. The entire industry would shrink by 50% market cap wise in the span of just 45 days. If that were to happen here, we could see $400 billion of cryptocurrency market capitalization disappear in a moment. But it wouldn't stay gone for long because there is so much adoption going on in cryptocurrency. Ultimately, we're going to have a decision point here at some point. I mean, Bitcoin, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later, how we should have seen, how we were hoping to see October and we didn't. But ultimately, Bitcoin is likely to see more volatility coming in soon. I'll just give you an example with one of my favorite technical indicators here, the Bollinger Bands. Going out to the weekly chart here, you see that with Bollinger Bands, there is this constant cyclical motion where Bollinger Bands get wider and then they get more narrow and then they get wider and then they get more narrow and then they get wider and then they get more narrow. Right now we're in a narrow phase where the Bollinger Bands are indicating there's very, very, very low uh, volatility. And one of the things I was talking about in the intro today is that we actually have less volatility on Bitcoin right now than the stock market does. People love to talk about, oh, wow, Bitcoin is so volatile and the stock market is... So calm. Well, the stock market is on a roller coaster ride right now. I mean, it looks like they're at Universal Studios right now, just jumping all over the place. The news outlets are doing a number on the so on uh, the stock market right now, whereas Bitcoin is trading sideways and has been for months, just building support at this region, just locking down twenty thousand dollars, so that if we do drop below it in the future. It will be extremely hard to do so. And if we do go through that 50% drop like we, we could see after we get back up above it, man, 20K is going to be rock solid. And we're going to see that stay in play. We can even see that in the VPVR. See, the VPVR is continuing to build and grow. We saw the same thing happen through this territory of eight to $10,000. Massive VPVR support to support us if we drop down into that territory now because we traded sideways for so long here. If we build the support at 20K, which is what we're doing right now, if we ever did need to drop down here again, we have this massive bulwark of support built in the price action that we are building right now. So we're actually pretty excited about the sideways trading here. Sideways movement is not a bad thing. It gets a bad rap because obviously there's not much to do on the trading front. But as far as the investment and the technical front, it's actually a very good good thing at times to lock in and prove to the world, yes, actually, Bitcoin is worth $20,000, and it does deserve to trade at $19,200. It does de deserve to trade at at least this level. It went to 70. It's trading at at least 20. So you are basically signaling to the entire planet that, yeah, you know what? Crypto, it's here to stay because it's trading sideways and able to hold a $360 billion market cap even whenever people are exiting the space in droves. At least the retail and the kind of uh, the people that were just here for uh, on the surface level are exiting the space. But whereas the actual people that are strongly and fundamentally entrenched in the space are continuing to develop things into the future. So let's look technically here at what we're seeing happen on uh, Bitcoin. As you guys know, we've been under a sell signal on Lux Algo ever since April the 9th of 2022. This sell signal is a pretty major one because it was confirmed uh, almost immediately and then turned into a strong sell signal, and we've been under it for a long time. I've been looking for a very long time. I mean, six months now. This this sell signal has been in effect since early April. I've been looking for a buy signal, and we thought we were going to see one back over here in uh, mid uh, early to mid August, and we just we just didn't get it. We didn't manage to get that. Uh, upward momentum that we needed, and we started moving to the downside. But if we do see Bitcoin somehow break bullish out of this descending triangle pattern, go through a rally, rally up to 21.5, maybe 22, maybe 23, it would be possible that we see a buy signal. But what I think is more likely is that Bitcoin will either trade sideways for several months, maybe into the new year, or have that big dip that we've been talking about. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month, or even the beginning of next year. But I do think that big drop is going to happen. And Lux Algo, guys, it's kind of calling it. If you look here, the current price target for Lux Algo is sitting, and this has been the same price target. This has not moved uh, to be honest with you, I think in since this functionality of the price target has been implemented to Lux Algo, has been sitting with the um, the upper range of the first of the first take profit level 
for sh for a short if you entered a short back then at thirteen thousand eight hundred dollars, which is a very peculiar level because if you look at thirteen eight in history, that's actually the local high that we set in June of twenty nineteen back over here. We were actually live streaming when this hit all time high and then dropped. I remember that live stream. Drop a one in chat if you were there for that live stream. That was rough. I was trying to warn you guys, guys. Bitcoin's getting a little bit carried away, and then nobody believed me, and it dropped. So that's what we saw happen there. But even on the low end. The take profit for a Lux Algo short position is $8,000. The mid position right here is $11,000, and that's honestly where I could see Bitcoin going because if we look out here on the VPVR just at this last several years of data, well, what do you see? Right here between about $9,500 to $11,000, that's where you see the bulk of the VPVR coming into play. That's where you see the take profit on Lux Algo. And frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if that occurred at this point, guys. So just keep in mind that that is a distinct possibility. Now, on the weekly chart, we're also under a sell signal here, but the take profit level is at an more uh, at a different level. It's sitting here between nineteen thousand dollars and eleven thousand seven hundred dollars. Eleven seven is another interesting level. If we just go ahead and look at this, you can see that that is the local top that we set back over here in February of twenty eighteen. I remember eleven thousand seven hundred dollars back then. The channel was three months old, and we were commentating on that. Uh, local top. It was a double top. And this is actually in a lot of the teaching that we've done over the years. I've used this double top as a form to actually just define what a double top is. This is a classic double top formation. We double topped at 11.7, did not manage to hold it. So $11,700, that's a really key level. I would, I would not be surprised if Bitcoin does go through this major drop to see the absolute local bottom be either 11.7 or 13.8 because both of those are such major and powerful levels. Even maybe $10,500, which was the local level here before the pandemic pandemic hit, those would be levels that I'd be looking at during that drop. But the interesting thing and the difficult thing for a trader here is that the sell signal on Lux Algo that we're basing a lot of this off of happened six months ago. So what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to enter a short position now based on a sell signal that happened six months ago? That's just not really a good idea in my opinion. And the reason is well, that sell signal came in when Bitcoin was trading at $47,000. So we've already seen a 57% retracement from that. So that starts to explain a lot of the reasoning why there's not a lot of trading going on right now. There's not a lot of people wanting to short because, well, gosh, we had a short we had a short signal on Lux Algo and through a variety of other indicators. And yet Bitcoin has already, first of all, it's already gone through a lot of the downward uh, momentum that it was going to. So people are a little bit hesitant to short because they don't want to just, they don't want the bottom to have already been in and then they get liquidated from their short position. But people are also hesitant to long because, well, gosh, there could be this, there, there could be this one final drop. So all the traders right now, and if you're a trader, you, you understand what I'm talking about on a daily chart swing trade time frame, are sitting in limbo wondering, Gosh, I don't have any confirmation that we're going to move to the downside, so I'm not really too confident to enter a short position. But then, Bitcoin's setting lower highs on the daily chart, and we have fundamental forces like war in Ukraine. We have fundamental forces like, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, holding down the market. So I don't really feel confident to go into a long position either, and you get stuck in this winter. But the thing is, eventually, and this is what always happens, eventually, a camel, uh, you know, a one piece of straw breaks the camel's back and something happens. Either you see a boom blast off and people start getting more confident, which is what happened in 2015 when the accumulation phase was going on, or you see what happened in late 2018 where Bitcoin was trading sideways and eventually it just couldn't hold it anymore and it dropped below $6,000, had that capitulation. And then it went low enough that people were confident enough, okay, it's got to be over now, so I'm comfortable going in to a long position. And ultimately, I think that's what we're going to see happen. We need something to happen to either give more confidence to the long, uh, the people that are trying to go long, the bulls, or to give more confidence to the bears so that there could be one last drop so that the bulls can be confident. And until that happens, you're going to see Bitcoin just continuing to trade sideways like this. But remember, Bitcoin trading sideways is not a bad thing. Bitcoin trading sideways gives us the uh, viewer of this channel, us, the investors in cryptocurrency, time to hone our skills and learn more about investing, learn more about financial sovereignty, learn more about different cryptocurrencies that we want to set ourselves up for into the next bull market. It gives time for the industry to continue growing for new projects, like some of the ones that we work with here on the channel, to continue bringing new products to market so the cryptocurrency is in a better position moving into the next bull market. So I'm going to go ahead and take a pause here, read some super chats, and then we will jump into, read some just normal chats probably also, and then we'll jump into some more altcoin technical analysis. All righty. Well, Sarah, do we have any super chat? We have 1,300 people watching. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure to smash that like button if you haven't already. 
I don't see any uh, no super, super chat. chat. Okay, but, that's all right. Um, that I is a okay. You see a certain comment? Yeah, not interesting. Try and make sure you're talking to the mic, sweetie. Um. I thought that this was very nice, and I appreciate uh, Crypto Set Guy. He said, any negative comments directed at Tim Smay, T-Shroom, or any directed at Devin Sarah is going to get deleted. I appreciate that, and I want to say thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, we do not want to spread hate or hate on these guys, regardless of whether or not they're working here anymore. I mean, we just want to be loving and stuff like that yes absolutely definitely want to make sure that we're being loving and everything to that effect thank you guys for your continued support for the channel and definitely a big thanks to uh you know tim t shrooms and uh christian want to give uh uh want to be very kind and, and uh about the name as far as if you guys didn't see christian uh, smay on the channel uh post a video on his channel so make sure to go and check that out where he detailed a lot of things that he'd been going through Someone was saying I need to blow my nose. Yeah, I was definitely feeling that. I was, I was like, yes, Sarah's gonna get a chance to talk, and I can sit there and, you know, clear my throat a little bit. So that was wonderful. We're gonna read some chat here for a second, but before we do that, I do just want to give a major shout out to one of our sponsors, who is none other than Anthony Price. If you guys are not familiar with Anthony Price, he is our CPA, and he works in cryptocurrency taxes. And if you guys are not working with a crypto CPA, you've got to be doing it, guys. Look, I understand what it's like to have a large crypto portfolio and wonder oh my goodness i've got four thousand transactions going on here it's not a real number but i mean that's that that is some people's case you have four thousand trades that have happened this year you've got 327 movements of money over 500 and you've got a 40,000 page long irs tax code that you're trying to contend with and the irs if you don't know has just hired thousands of new people into the agency to make sure that people are paying their taxes in cryptocurrency the last thing you want is to get audited by the irs and your books are not in order the last thing you want is to accidentally have underpaid on taxes then the irs comes for you or or on the flip side, have overpaid on taxes and you could have saved money legally through using a, a cryptocurrency a CPA like Anthony Price and you just gave money to the federal government that you could have kept for yourself. You don't want either one of those. You want to be in exactly one place and that is totally compliant, totally within the bounds of the law, but paying as little as possible. And that's what Anthony Price is going to help you to do. I mean, he's even got Price in his name. I mean, it, it, how much more of a perfect fit could you think of? We've had a lot of people here at the uh, Coffee and Crypto, Crypto Jeb channel, work with him, and he's helped a lot of people save a lot of money on taxes, so make sure to check him out. The link is in the description box down below. Shout out to Anthony. Appreciate uh, all of the collaboration. It does look like we have another super chat here. Uh, do you want to read it, Sarah? Yeah, make sure you're talking to the mic, though. We gotta get we gotta get Sarah, uh, you know, involved more in this because she's not a she's not a technical analyst or anything. But I think she's gonna learn more about crypto. So if you guys have any questions for Sarah, feel free to drop uh, drop them in the chat. Um, Cryptoverse said, thank you for supporting Jeb, Sarah. Aw. Thank you, guys. Well, that's, a, well, that's for you to answer. That was, that was directed at you. What do you mean? Well, I mean, he was thanking you. He was thanking you for supporting me. Well, thank you also, Sarah, for supporting me. You always oh, support me. Oh, I see it now. Okay. Yeah, he was thanking you for supporting me, and I thank you for that also. Oh, I see. Thank you. Appreciate that. Guys, we're going to read a couple more, uh, we're going to read a couple more chats, and then we're going to jump into some news. Got a couple of really interesting headlines, including the Guinness Book of World Records. And uh, let's see, what else was it? Oh, yeah, October. We're going to talk about a couple of those things, and then we will uh, we will continue on with the channel. With the channel? with the, Obviously, the channel is going to continue, but continue on with the show here. Let's see. Uh, someone asked, when did you know Jeb was the one? Beardy Day. That would be directed at you, Sarah. What do you, when, when did you know I was the one? Uh, I don't know. I'd have been praying for a while, and I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of it. Probably by, I don't know, at least by our fourth or fifth date, I hoped you were the one. I don't know exactly when I knew you were the one. Well, I knew Probably you were... on our wedding day is when I knew you were Well, the I mean, one. that, yeah, for sure. Definitely <laughs> knew that, knew it then, but uh, kind of knew it before then. I would say I knew it, hmm, I want to, I honestly want to say our second date when we were sitting on that park bench. That was probably when I knew, to be honest with you. So do appreciate all of the support there and uh, do obviously appreciate my wife for helping me out here. 
Let's see. We got a couple more comments. It looks like I uh, always have enjoyed Jeb's insight and missed it. Thank you, Crypto Meme. Appreciate that. Queen said, Queen Sarah, thank you for being willing to learn. Fensov. Hashtag financial sovereignty. Yes, yeah, Sarah and I have been talking a lot about financial sovereignty and that concept relatively recently, and we are very excited to continue the movement. All right. Well, guys, we are going to jump into the next phase of the show. If you're enjoying today's show, make sure to hit that like button. We're going to run through some different... Uh, we're going to run through some different uh, charts here. We're going to start with some news, though. Bitcoin traders patiently waited for October. Historically, prices show BTC gained 10 out of 13 Octobers. I see you over there. <laughs> Somebody commented something that embarrassed Sarah, it looks like. In recent times, Bitcoin's volatility has been the lowest since it's been since 2020. And after last month's market downturn, crypto enthusiasts expected a reversal in October. In fact, Bitcoin has seen gains in October 10 out of the last 13 years, which is how long Bitcoin's been around, which has led crypto enthusiasts to call them month October. While Bitcoin is up close to 3% against the U.S. dollar since the start of the month, and there's just over two weeks left until the end of October, Bitcoin supporters are curious about how this month will end. As you guys know, and here's a couple of chat, a uh, couple of uh, comments from some of my colleagues in the space that, that we would consider friends. Lark, for example, said, we have hope for Octo uh, October for crypto. Instead, it seems like we are getting uh, crabtober. We're getting crab walking. We are crab walking sideways. I mean, the market even looks like a crab right now. It's got that boom. There you go. It's a crab. It's not doing anything. It's moving completely sideways. We got alt crypto gems over here. Uh, you can see on his Twitter over here talking about how we are seeing uh, October, please. We got the moon. Carl, old friend of mine, said October is halfway through. When will October kick in? Coin Mamba said, I was promised October. Where is it at? I'm here to tell you it ain't coming. I don't think it's going to happen anyway. We got 12 days left, and uh, I think we might get a we might get a spooky season. We might get a spooky spooky October or something here in 12 days. Maybe we'll see a massive drop at Halloween. I just really feel like somebody's going to clip this here in two weeks if it drops. We might end up seeing a massive drop like right on Halloween and scaring the living daylights out of everybody who doesn't watch this stream because I'm here to tell you if it drops 50%, that's a great thing for crypto. In fact, it's the thing that will end up leading to the bull market. But if you're not watching this stream, then you'll probably be like, ah, Bitcoin just dropped 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%. And then what are we going to do? The thing we should do is buy if we have money on the sidelines to take advantage of those lows because you're probably never going to see Bitcoin at nine or $10,000 again if it does go down there. Now, let's continue on here. October may not be happening, but Bitcoin has been added to the Guinness Book of World Records as the first decentralized cryptocurrency. Took them long enough, guys. Bitcoin's been around for a long time. We're talking about a $300 billion industry worth a trillion dollar. A trillion dollar industry was worth $3 trillion. Come on, guys. Guinness Book of World Records finally got around to it, adding this. Satoshi Nakamoto's Bitcoin enters the Guinness Book of World Records. Just thought that was pretty interesting for you. Ultimately, it's not that big of a news story, but I just thought it was cool. So there you go. Bitcoin has now officially become the first cryptocurrency. I don't know how it can become the first cryptocurrency when there's now 50,000 some cryptocurrencies and about a billion different NFT projects. But finally, it's been deemed as the first cryptocurrency. So boom, there you go. We're going to go ahead and jump on now over to Glassnode. Just something I wanted to mention here that has been you know, not talked about much because, frankly, there's nothing to talk about here, but I did just want to make sure you guys remember is that Bitcoin fees are nowhere near as high as they used to be. They've been sitting so flat ever since July of last year. The last over a year, Bitcoin fees have been next to nothing. Drop a one in chat if you remember back here at the end of 2017 when we were paying $50 to $60 per transaction for Bitcoin fees. Now, we, obviously, Bitcoin has had some updates that have helped with that, and also the network is just less congested, unlike me, over the last year. And that means that the fees are lower, but ultimately, I did just want to bring this to your attention. This does help with the adoption of cryptocurrency. Looks like Sarah wants to say something. What's up? No? No. Oh. oh, she's shy. No, she wanted to say something, then she decided she didn't want to, so that's okay. Either way, we're going to go ahead and move on here to uh, Matic. Actually, we're not going to go to Matic first. We're going to go to Ethereum first and just do some quick TA on this. I've talked about the short term on uh, Ethereum recently it's pretty much ranging sideways and has been for the last month in a five percent range it's not really doing a whole lot of anything the unfortunate thing is we even saw an inverse head and shoulders pattern form here after the cpi data came out last thursday i think it was and we saw ethereum rally for a little bit and then what did we do we went ahead and double topped right here at thirteen thousand uh, excuse me thirteen hundred and forty dollars and didn't manage to do a whole lot and there's actually a lot of relevance to that level because if you remember the former all-time high on eth it is actually sitting at uh, about thirteen hundred and forty dollars as well so right now ethereum is lower 
than his previous all-time high by a little bit, just like Bitcoin is, and is not really being able to sustain anything higher. Ultimately, guys, Ethereum has managed to outpace Bitcoin in the past and build market dominance against Bitcoin, and that may happen here over the next several months. But even just recently, you can see that Ethereum has lost some of its market capital, uh, market dominance from about 20% down to about 17%. Of course, you saw ETH 2.0 come through, which was wonderful. We were happy to see that. But ultimately, guys, this market is just sideways, and what a lot of it and what it is going to do is going to come down a lot to what Bitcoin does. Luckily, it does seem like it's bottomed out here in the RSI. We dropped down to 26 back in June of this year, which was the lowest reading that the RSI has ever given on weekly chart Ethereum over US dollars. And we've also seen a bullish uptick in the MACD. Looking here at, for example, Lux Algo and uh, VPVR, you can see that we've been under a strong sell signal here on on Ethereum here ever since uh, May. And that gives us the exact same predicament that Bitcoin finds itself in. It's already gone through a massive drop, but, you know, the, it's still under a sell signal. We haven't had a buy signal. So the question remains, when is it going to finish dropping? Where's the bottom? Well, if we're looking at Bitcoin going to between nine and $13,000, which is roughly about half of the previous all-time high for it, then it would not It would make sense if Ethereum went to roughly half of its previous all-time high as well, which could be as low as $700. And to be honest with you, that would make sense from a Lux Algo and VPVR standpoint because the take profit here for Lux Algo at the take profit one zone starts at 888, which is a pretty cool number, which is actually the local bottom that we set back over here in June. So it's possible we just retrace to that same level and set a double bottom. That'd be great for long-term technical structure. Or we could drop as low as 600, uh, $621, which would ultimately, in the grand scheme of things, be an 86% retracement from all-time high. I would not be surprised if Ethereum had another drop on it to come just the same way that Bitcoin could have as well. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that. I'm not saying that's for certain going to happen. And obviously... A lot of people would prefer if Bitcoin and crypto didn't go through another major drop because a lot of you guys might be in long positions right now and you're you're down on those and you don't want it to drop that far because you'll get liquidated or something. But ultimately speaking, for the vast majority of people, if it did drop that low, it would be a great thing for the investors because they'd be able to buy back in lower. So that's what I'm seeing on Ethereum right now. Not a whole lot to bring you updates on, to be quite honest, other than the fact that we have seen that big drop. One final thing I will say on ETH that could come into play is that we do have what looks to be a one, two, three, four, five Elliott wave correction, which means that this fifth wave that we're in could probably end up falling down below the previous local level, which is sitting at uh, $900. If it did that, that would fulfill the one, two, three, four, five Elliott wave correction. Uh, well, actually, that wouldn't be a correction. That'd be a, that'd be a primary wave because it's one, two, three, four, five rather than ABC. But a lot of times that fifth uh, section of the wave is going to go lower than the third and that would also back up the idea and give credence to the idea that Ethereum could drop back down in, into the three-digit territory before that bull market starts. And look, guys, if that happens, again, I'm just going to hammer this home. It's not a bad thing. It's not the end of the world. Moving on here on over to Cardano. I'm going to run through Cardano, Link, and uh, Matic pretty quickly here because I want to make sure that we have time to read any final Super Chats and make sure we tune in with you guys. If you're watching today's show, make sure to smash that like button. Very much appreciate all of the continued support that you guys are showing. As you guys know, Cardano is currently down 88% from all-time high, currently sitting at $0.35. Cents. And uh, the reason that we are looking at Cardano, looking at his chart, is because I want you guys to know something. Cardano might be actually leading the charge on this breaking of market structure. Here We had market structure on Cardano where it was sitting in a descending triangle pattern, very similar to what we saw happening on Bitcoin. We had lower highs being formed, similar lows being formed, and we saw Cardano dropping below this 41 cent territory starting about a week ago or so. Back on Monday, October the 10th, it started breaking below that market structure. Well, guys, that's pretty much exactly what we're saying could end up happening here on Bitcoin, where Bitcoin is sitting in this descending triangle pattern. Bitcoin could start breaking slowly below $18,000, which is its local low. If Cardano actually is the canary in the coal mine, metaphorically, then that could indicate that Bitcoin is going to end up doing a very similar thing relatively soon. That's also driving Cardano's RSI down here to around 24. It's uh, it's put it's continued the MACD in a bearish direction. And it has just continued pushing Cardano deeper and deeper and deeper into its Lux Algo uh, take profit territory, getting close to it, which starts at 30 cents, could go all the way down here in the median to 20 cents. Now, Cardano probably doesn't have as much, as far to drop as Bitcoin and Ethereum do. But to be honest with you, if it did, it's not the end of the world, guys. One of the things I often compare Cardano to is Amazon. If you look in the history of Amazon, and this is not giving me a chart that I really want to see. That is a cryptocurrency chart. Looking at uh, AMZN's 
uh, price action here. Going back to the uh, going back to the early 2000s here, we saw Amazon drop from, and this is adjusted because there's been stock splits since then, about five dollars sixty cents, down ninety five percent. Over the course of two years, Amazon dropped down to 28 cents, and from there, it ended up rallying, as you will remember from, you know, any time you've ever turned on financial media, has rallied 68,000% in the 20 years to follow. So Amazon has done remarkably well, even after dropping 95%, and the reason for that is something that Jeff Bezos talked about quite a lot, and that is that ultimately, you're not looking for the price of the cryptocurrency to drive the price of the cryptocurrency, or is what he was talking about. You're not looking for the price of the stock to drive the price of the stock. You're looking for the fundamentals and the adoption and the use case. And whatever problem is being solved, however large that is, and however effectively the company can do that, competitively, competitively the company or cryptocurrency in, the, in, in ADA's case can do that, comes into play. Amazon was able to take a multi-trillion dollar problem of distributing um, you know, commercial goods all over the planet in the span of a day or two and turn that into a multi-trillion dollar business. Cardano wants to serve billions of people with identity. That's a huge, huge market worth trillions of dollars. So Cardano being down this much doesn't bother me. If I look out 20 years, I see Cardano rallying 10, 20x if it is able to actually meet its use case. And based on the way it's built, I've interviewed Charles Hoskinson. I've done a lot of research on the back end of how it functions. I, I do strongly believe that that is going to be the case. So if you are not already invested in Cardano, it's something to take a look at. I think that it is at an absolutely incredible place right now to be um, accumulating. Tell me if you'd like an in-depth video on why I believe Cardano is such a powerful and uh, resolute cryptocurrency. I'm going to go ahead and run through Link and Matic here relatively quickly. Not much to talk about on them because they're, look. I mean, just again, they're very similarly matched to the rest of the cryptocurrencies in play right now. If you're watching today's show and hearing the sound of my voice, make sure to smash that like button. Do appreciate all of you for tuning in. There's a symmetrical triangle pattern on Link right now. If you don't know what Link is, Link is short for Chain Link. Chain Link helps for uh, bringing together data on blockchain is a very powerful uh, cryptocurrency. It helps with, uh, it's, it's an Oracle protocol. It helps to bring in information off chain, on chain, so that you're able to bring in different things like, you know, it's been applied in all different areas, but one of the common examples is if you wanted sports data so that you could have a betting website built on a cryptocurrency blockchain, you need to get that data off chain to being on chain in a reliable manner. That's what Chainlink helps to do. Very valuable protocol. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily as big of a use case as something like Cardano, because Cardano is supposed to be you know, the it's supposed to be the actual bedrock infrastructure, but Link definitely has a massive use case. And I definitely believe it's actually it's going to end up being worth a lot more in the future than what it is now. Ultimately, one of the big things to look out for on uh, Chainlink here is just the simple fact, guys, that it is trading sideways and it may have already bottomed out, to be honest with you. It's kind of hard to tell on Chainlink, but the fact is it's already down 87% from all time high. And instead of having this descending triangle pattern formation happening on it, like we're seeing on a lot of other cryptocurrencies, instead it's going through a symmetrical triangle uh, pattern, as you can see right there. That does indicate that we could be forming higher lows and it could be that $5.30 was actually the bottom on chain link, but time will tell on that. That we don't just have one strong sell signal and then no more buy signals like what we saw on Bitcoin, for example, where we saw the one buy the one sell signal and no sell signals, uh, no buy signals at all. Or over on Cardano, where we even saw a few buy signals, even though they weren't confirmed. Over here on chain link, you actually do see buy signals, and you see that one of them right here got confirmed with trend catcher. So that's a really valuable piece of information to tell us that well, you know what? Maybe chain link actually did bottom out. Chain link is a very valuable and uh, you do, you just it's it's an indispensable cryptocurrency in the broader ecosystem. So as far as Chainlink is concerned, I'm not going to go into too much detail on it because I really just want to give an overview for people who are invested in it. It, to be honest with you, may have already bottomed, whereas cryptocurrencies like Cardano may not have, Bitcoin may not have, Ethereum may not have, Chainlink might actually have already bottomed. And if so, that's a really good thing because that should mean that the rest of the cryptocurrencies won't be far behind. It's not, that's a little bit of a difficult uh, comparison to draw. Well, this cryptocurrency is bottomed, so the rest might, but ultimately these markets do move in tandem a lot, and oftentimes one or more cryptocurrencies will bottom first before the rest of the market starts to do it and give you kind of that early warning. So it's very possible that Chainlink has already done that. Let's go ahead and take a look here at Matic. Matic is a really valuable cryptocurrency. Definitely gone under some... Uh interesting changes recently because it is a protocol that helps with Ethereum and a lot of the things that Ethereum was struggling with, Ethereum 2.0 is helping with, but Matic ultimately is still a very valuable cryptocurrency for a number of reasons. Don't have time to get into a bunch of it today, but what I do want to show you on Matic is that it may be in the same category as Link. It dropped 
90% bottoming out here in June of 2022. And ever since then, we've actually been moving to the upside. We had a buy signal right here that got confirmed and, you know, it actually took off. And we have this you know, a uh, uh, bull flag right here with a current buy signal that just flashed a couple of days ago. It's yet to be confirmed by Trendcatcher, but if Matic is able to stay up here above 85 cents, even moving up towards a dollar, you're likely going to see Trendcatcher turn green and you're going to see another confirmation. And you could actually see Matic be one of the early movers in this market. You could see Matic attempting to push to the upside while Bitcoin drops. Bitcoin goes through his drop. Matic's moving to the upside. People are, uh, you know, cashing out of Bitcoin because they're getting freaked out and they see Bit and they see Matic moving up. They put money over there and it could be one of those early movers that is already bottomed and ends up moving to the upside first and then those people that made money on Matic will turn around put it into Bitcoin and that'll allow Bitcoin to move to the upside from there as far as some of his technicals are concerned you can see that RSI is moving to the upside we got higher highs and higher lows over there that's wonderful always good to see this buy signal for example on Lux Algo has a take profit bottom uh, the bottom of the take profit zone at a dollar three cents top of the take profit zone at a dollar 27 cents ultimately Matic is already up right now 170 percent from all-time high and is a great project and i do think that if you invest in it you're going to be glad you did in five or ten years so here's the scoop bitcoin may not have bottomed yet but a couple of the altcoins may have and if the altcoins have that indicates that they have been flushed out everybody who was going to leave has left and the market is now primed and ready for a movement to the upside as i said it could be six to twelve months before you see finally that major bottoming happening on bitcoin and then a big movement happening to the upside but i do believe that anybody that gets in cryptocurrency broadly in the next six to twelve months is going to be very glad they did here in five to ten years as you see bitcoin passing a hundred thousand dollars you see cardano passing three to five dollars you see a Ethereum passing five to ten thousand dollars. You see Matic passing ten dollars. You see Chainlink passing, uh, you know, fifty to a hundred dollars. There is a lot of opportunity in this space. And if you're here now, I just want to remind you of something. You are in at the ground floor of something. This industry is so young. I've been here five years. I thought the industry was young back then. It, I mean, obviously it was younger back then than it was. It is still so young. I remember when I got into the space. Oh, five years out. It's going to be like flying cars. You know, they're always five years off. Crypto is not like that because it actually is coming to fruition, actually is going to happen one day, but it actually does take more time than you might think. But if you're going to be here for five to 10 years, you're going to be so glad you did. I've been here for five years now, and I am so glad I've been here for five years. So I look out another five years, and I say, man, I've watched this market grow 10x in five years. Golly, 5x if you want to be really conservative in that number of years. And I look out five years and I can see it happening again. I can see another 5 to 10x coming in cryptocurrency from current levels. And I'm excited to share that with you here on this channel. But let's go ahead and read some chat. Before we do, though, do want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors who I am very, very excited to be bringing you. And they are none other than Hedge. If you guys are not familiar with Hedge, you absolutely need to be. I love, love, love this company. I also love the founder of it. He's a friend of mine. I'm actually going to be doing an interview for the channel with him relatively soon. His name's David. And at Hedge, if you don't know what it is, essentially what it does, it allows you to take your incoming direct deposit from your job or from anything, but generally speaking, customers are using this to take their direct deposit from their job. And essentially what it does is it reroutes that direct deposit through another bank account and automatically takes out some of your direct deposit, normally again from a paycheck, and puts it into cryptocurrency so that you don't have to bring your direct deposit into your own bank account and then move it on to Coinbase and then pay Coinbase's fees, the transaction fee to move it there, the tr the uh, uh, sorry, the transfer fee to move it there, the transaction fee to move it there, then the trading fee to trade it into whatever you want, and then the transaction fee to move it into cold storage. Hedge will automate all of that for you, making you save time and making you save fees. And ultimately, that's what we need more of in crypto. We need things that are going to help us save on fees and help us to save time. Because if you are working with large sums of cryptocurrency and you've got a busy life, I know what it's like. I work full time. I want to spend time with my wife and my kids. I want to make sure that I am able to spend time doing the things that I want to do rather than every single week having to go in here and set up a bunch of automatic trades or do a bunch of manual trades and investments. I would much rather set it up through something like GetHedge. So make sure you get hedge.io with the link in the description box down below appreciate them for their continued support of the channel could not speak highly more highly of them and their founders so thank you very much to hedge anyway let's go ahead and read some chat here i we may have super chats if not we can just go ahead and read some chat to wrap it out do we have any super chats we have uh, one super chat all righty from thesis himself oh yeah i see this question <laughs> do you do you regret buying link at 30 dollars 
I, you know, I don't know if I regret it. I do remember that because I did buy it at that point. I don't know if I necessarily regret it because ultimately, guys, I do think Chainlink is going to be worth $100 in the future. I've talked about $100 Chainlink. I'm still holding that. I'd have to go and check. I don't think I've traded that into, into anything else. I may have, but I don't think I have. You know, at the end of the day, guys, I just, it, this reminds me of when I bought Ethereum. Let me, just, let me go to my chart real quick, just to kind of give you some context here, because a lot of people are like, oh, this trade wasn't perfect, so it was a failure. Not the case at all. You know, if you look at it today, if I were to cash out that link now, yeah, I lost money on that trade. You know, ultimately, most of our portfolios are down at least some during the bear market. That's just kind of how it works. That's why you want to make sure you have some kind of way of generating revenue, whether that be you're a full-time trader, which I am not a full-time trader. I'm an investor, but... Um, However you generate your revenue, you want to make sure you can pay your bills without having to dip into your investments. And that's where we're very fortunate to find ourselves uh, personally. But I remember when Bitcoin dropped down to $3,000, Ethereum dropped down to $95. I bought Ethereum here at $185. I've told this story so many times. I bought Ethereum at $185, and it's almost the same story of this. Oh, you bought Chainlink at $30, and now Chainlink's at you know $7. Oh, man, you lost out. Yeah, but I look out three years from that purchase where I bought ETH. 50%, 100% higher than where I could have. I could have bought it on a 50% discount at 90 bucks and caught the exact bottom, but I didn't. I bought it at 184. I made tens of thousands of dollars from that trade, just to be quite honest with you, because that, that investment, because Ethereum ended up going to $5,000. I bought like, gosh, I don't know. I bought, I think 12 Ethereum or something like that. It ended up making a lot of money for me, even though I didn't get the exact bottom. Could I have bought Link lower? Absolutely, friggin' lutely I could have bought Link lower, and I have hindsight on that now. Ultimately, if I were to go back, one thing I would do differently in the next bull market is cash out more cryptocurrency at the top. That's one thing I did. I just held on to a lot of it and now watched it go down. It's going to come back up. I'm still confident in all the projects I'm in, but I probably would have cashed out more and taken more profits. Dollar cost average and scaled out of those investments into maybe another investment opportunity, opportunity like real estate, maybe another investment opportunity like, um, well, not even investment, just into cash accounts so that I could hold on to that money. But ultimately, I'm still doing very well financially, and I'm very thankful for cryptocurrency and the opportunity has provided and all the lessons I've learned because now I get to move on into this next bull market, having learned a lot of things, and I get to continue to grow, and uh, we get to continue to grow here on the channel and as a family. So I'm pretty excited about that. So yeah, as far as th that could have been a better trade, for sure. I'm not going to deny that, but I'm not, I'm not really too concerned about it either because it will come back. I'm confident that Link will regain at least that territory. Got 1,300 people watching. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Seems like you really enjoy just the in-depth, nitty-gritty TA, and I do too. So... Let's see if we can't get to 1,000 likes before the stream's over. We got 840 likes. It is currently 11 a.m., so technically we ought to be ending the show, but I think we can go for another five minutes or so and read some chat. Sarah, do you see any uh, you see any comments or questions directed at you? Let's see if we can get you a little involved. Let's see. What do we have? What do we have here? We have so many people in chat. JoJo's in chat. Matt C's in chat. Uh, crypto sec guy in chat queen phil c uh seek and hunt freedom advocate matt let's see freedom advocate again just so many chats golly you guys are just going crazy really appreciate all of the support robert casanova good to see you uh old school coming out of the woodwork seeing jeb's face on the thumbnail yep how much cardano would you like to accumulate before the start of the next run um I don't really know exactly on that number, to be honest, but I'd like to accumulate a good bit. Good day, good people, Memory Man said. Good day, my friend. Let's see, any questions? We got a couple days, we got a couple days, a couple minutes left here. We do have a question. Okay. As far as Eric uh, Dropbaker. Sorry, I probably butchered that. Person. Hey, that's a theme of the show. If you butcher it, that's, that's part of the comedy of it. Okay. At Coffee and Crypto, question, what levels are you putting your buyer orders in on the way down? Or are you just waiting for the drop and to see where it starts accumulation again? Yeah, I don't have any current buy orders set down there. I'm I'm really watching the market. I mean, I watch the market daily. It's my job. So I, I, I'm watching the market every day. And if I see something I want to jump on, I'm going to jump on it. As far as if I see Bitcoin drop down to, you know, $13,000, I'm probably going to want to scoop some up. If I see... Uh, for example, Cardano dropped down to 21 cents, probably going to scoop some up. If I see Chainlink drop down to $5, uh, I'm probably going to scoop some up. If I see Matic drop down, which is probably not going to, I'm probably going to scoop some up. Ethereum under $1,000, probably going to uh, scoop some up. 
I don't have any exact buy order set up on those just yet, but I may end up doing that and getting a little bit more um, uh, decided on exactly the levels. But currently, I'm just I'm just kind of watching, and I'm probably going to start accumulating again relatively soon at these levels, uh, even at these levels, even if it does drop again, just because I'm pretty confident that we're going to see things happen in a great way. Silent said, at Crypto Jeb, when's Sarah face reveal? Oh, and also Erica Brubaker said, I'm honored that you butchered my name, Sarah. You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that's hilarious. Like I said, that's that's part of the show is uh, is butchering the name. So yeah, for silent, when face reveal, Sarah. I don't know. What? Uh, silent, uh, silent, silent. Obviously, is how we say his name. He said, uh, "When Sarah face reveal?" I don't know if you're going to do a face reveal. Is I don't know if that's the plan or not. It's up to you, but. I guess we shall find out. <laughs> we shall find out. It took me two years to do a face reveal. So, you know, two years from whatever day Thursday was, I guess. I guess you're just going to have to stick around. I guess you're just going to have to subscribe to the channel, hit that post notification bell, so that if we ever post something that says Crypto Sarah Face Reveal, then we see it. And by the way, her name is Sarah with no H. She spells it the correct way, S-A-R-A. -A. I have a sister named Sarah with an H. So I'm a little torn, but I got to side with my wife here. It's spelled S-A-R-A. Spelled so shout out to all the crypto Sarahs out there with no H. Let's see. Uh, NMCT also just donated. Said, which one would you, would you choose? Nineteen thousand dollars of Adam Dot or Kadena? To be honest, all of those are good projects, but I probably wouldn't choose one of them if I was putting nineteen thousand dollars into it. But I would probably. Sp oh, gosh, I don't know because it's been a while since I've looked at I've looked at Kadena or Cosmos. I'm a big fan of Dot though. So what I'd probably say is, well, first of all, only invest in something that you know. If you know one of those projects really well and you're really confident in it, then you need to you need to invest in that one if you're going to be picking between them. I really like DOT, so following that methodology, I'd probably say DOT because I like Polkadot, and I think the Layer 0 uh, approach that it has is going to end up doing a really great job. So that's what I would say, but ultimately it comes down to your own research and investment of time into the space. Silent said, at Coffee and Crypto, uh, sorry for misspelling your name, Sarah. Uh, let's see. Greg is in chat. Shout out to Greg. Should I buy Link or Bitcoin? I think they're both good projects, Greg. I think they're both good. Looks like you're getting out of just Cardano, so that's good. Happy to hear that, buddy. Uh, always side with the wife. <laughs> Well, I mean, not necessarily, but on something like that, yeah, definitely. You want to make sure that you're in unity as best you can. Jeb, I love the fact that you enter your buys and tell your audience before you do it. The future we should all buy at the same time as always. Also, it would be great to tell us when you decide to. Yeah, I haven't really done a whole lot of purchases lately. I've just been kind of sitting on it, but excited to see what the Lord's going to do with our portfolio. Jeb and Sarah, you guys are great together. We appreciate you guys. God bless. Health plan said. TA on dot. Maybe tomorrow, but... Uh, but not right now. All right, well, guys, we went a little bit over because we were having a great show, and we just we really appreciate all of you guys tuning in, but we're going to have to go ahead and uh, jump on out of here. Uh, Escocia said, can someone link Smay's channel? His channel is literally just Christian Maynard. Christian smelled like the religion, and Maynard spelled M-A-Y-N-A-R-D, and he uploaded a video uh, titled Goodbye, where he uh, was very kind. It was a, it was really, it was a tearjerker of a video. Uh, definitely make sure to go subscribe to him. Uh, good friend of mine. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it out for today's video. Really appreciate all of you tuning in. As I said, make sure to check out Lux Algo. Make sure to check out Anthony Price. And make sure to get hedge.io with the link down below in the description box. Really appreciate all of you tuning in. And cannot wait for today's show. No, excuse me, for tomorrow's show. Because I love bringing you guys content. And we might do some polka dot technical analysis as you guys asked for. Looks like Crypto Set Guy may have just linked Smay's channel, so make sure to go check out that video he made. I think he, I think it went out on Friday, so appreciate him for that. Anyway, guys, before we go, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!